Hey everybody, Texas Trophy here, Lance's Performance Shop, along with StarMobiles.com. It is Wednesday night, it is an awesome day outside. The sun's staying out longer, it's warmer, Easter's just around the corner. And we have got an unexpected video for you. We've got another tool haul from SK Tools. So, uh, this is sort of prefaced with two things, an item I've really wanted, something I thought could be handy, and then something that I used to want. Uh, that a couple of you were interested in seeing as well. So we're going to go ahead and throw down right here. Just jump right into it. Again, timestamps and links down below. They are your friends. So if you're looking at that, you're thinking a glove. Do you really need another glove? And the answer is 100% no. Uh, I believe I have found my forever gloves. I am still testing them. I am cycling through them as we go. Uh, it takes time. Uh, case in point, these alphas here, uh, they have uh, obviously seen quite a bit of use. I've got the heavy duty leather vibes at work. Uh, I've got my red vibes here that are covered half in blue paint and half in primer. <laughs> and, uh, they've not let me down. I can't say the same for some of the other gloves we brought in, but uh, with the thumb injury, which at this point in time, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, mainly I wear the gloves to try and keep stuff from getting under the fingernail because once it gets under the fingernail for whatever reason it doesn't want to come out. Uh, it's really hard to explain. I'm sure those of you that have been in a similar position probably had a similar experience. But when this happened, this is one of the pairs of gloves I was looking at. And the reason I didn't bring them in is the price was absurdly high. I mean, they're $45.00. And I can tell you right now, they are not worth $45. This is just, they look awesome. Don't get me wrong there. Especially if green is your color, uh, or if you're a huge SK fan, that's all an added bonus. But in terms of the glove quality themselves, uh, these are made by mechanics. That may be a pro for some of you. It may be a con for some of you. Uh, the biggest thing is, you know, fitment, right? right? So if you're accustomed to wearing whatever for mechanics and you're an extra large, you know what size to get. Similarly, if you buy gloves all the time at AutoZone and you get a medium, that's gonna translate here, or at least it should. So, uh, these do seem a bit tight compared to everything else I've been wearing recently. I don't know if it's because they're brand new or something, could be. Uh, but Derek on Instagram, he was very intrigued by these too. He kind of had the same thoughts as me, but he's like, man, they just look so good. You know, I might just buy them for a driving glove type of a thing. Uh, this could be like your fair weather glove. You know, like if you're doing a job that you want a glove, but you're not really going to get it dirty. Or you could just absolutely trash these, whatever you choose to do. Uh, the bottom line is I wouldn't pay anywhere near. If I'm exchanging $45 of my money, I would expect four pairs of these. <laughs> And, uh, that's not what we got. The good news is uh, when we brought these in, they were on SK Steels and Deals. Still are as of me filming this. Again, that could change, but I'll have it linked down below. And um, basically half price, like $22.98, which I still think that's a bit high. Even though they look great, even though it's SK, it's a great color scheme. The green and the black really, really pops. At the end of the day, they're mechanics gloves, and I just, they're not impact or anything. I've had experience with these gloves. That's the reason I quit wearing them years ago. Uh, they're not going to hold up uh, to justify the $22 price tag, in my opinion. Uh, if this was a deal where these were like 15 bucks, maybe even $19.99, and then it's like, oh, you know, I realize that's not the best glove, but it just, the aesthetics alone sold me. That's kind of understandable. If you're looking for a glove and you've got $45, no. Uh, even even if it's your favorite thing ever, maybe then you justify it, kind of, but for everyone else, no. Uh, there are many, many, many better options out there, especially at the price point. I'm not trying to be harsh or a critic, I'm just trying to save your money for you. <laughs> so, Because uh, again, keep in mind, everything I link down below, I make nothing off of. But let's take a look at these. Number one, I, and again, I'm not going to lie, they look amazing. Uh, out of every mechanics you know, like custom or special branded glove I've seen. This is probably my favorite one. Uh, we'll kind of do this so you kind of get both angles on hand and you know what other people would see. Uh, the SK logo is great. It is actually kind of a, a fancy deal. It's not just like a cheap sewn on. It's kind of got some height and elevation to it. You've got branding here on the cuff. The Velcro, this is sort of a point of contention. It's real chinchy. Uh, again, I am someone, luckily, that does not like to strap those on unless I'm doing something that necessitates it. The kind of split pattern palm, it's stitched fairly well, at least on this one. You kind of have varying instances of success I found with mechanics gloves. But uh, 
it's just kind of one of their basic ones again no impact protection or anything here i'm not sure that they offer those but again putting a positive spin on this we got these at half off and just like they did when i wanted to bring them in when the thumb thing happened they look super super good so uh, especially the splits here with the green there's something about the green and the black just really really works well uh, it's not the most comfortable thing i've ever had on but again i kind of have gotten somewhat picky with gloves now that i've actually had different kinds on me so uh, again if you see this and you're like man those look really good i would totally buy them for 22 and they're no longer on steals and deals Continue to monitor that, maybe subscribe to their newsletters, see if they ever put them on clearance or have a promotion. And in the meantime, take your 45 bucks and get yourself some Alpha Gloves. That is linked down below. I don't make anything off of it, but you save 20% when you use the code Lone Star. <laughs> so, uh, I only recommend those again because I've got, I don't even know, four or five pairs in use at various locations. And these have been in use for a long time now, and they haven't failed me. So, uh, this would actually sort of be close to a competitor here. And uh, I can tell you right now, look at the difference in the Velcro, okay? Like we've got this tiny little area and that tiny patch. And then look at this one, okay? That's, and again, this is with, what, 18 plus months of use you know so it's still functional that's not something you can say for a lot of gloves i have no tears in any of these yet uh, and again colors you can get green you can get fluorescent green you can get red lots of cool like kind of stealth colors as well but in terms of a private labeled mechanics glove these look sweet now again uh, I will probably treat them as fair weather gloves. I've got what I use for heavy duty. I've still got tons of gloves I want to test out, but I'm going to try to keep these clean. If I have something where I need clean gloves to tackle a task that has clean materials, you'll probably see me use these. So uh, we will call it good right there. Now we're going to jump in and tackle this guy right here. So this is from SK. It is their part number 91702. This would typically cost $2205, which again seems a little steep, but at $1099, it's an absolute steal in my opinion. Assuming it works, which it very well may not. <laughs> but what this is, uh, I don't know if you can tell, um, it's what they call, I believe the, their terminology is a bolt rattler. And so what this is going to do, if this looks like it would be something that you would put, you know, in a uh, air hammer, that's exactly what it is. And then this side basically just pounds away on the bolt. And then we have a hex bolster. And so I've never used anything like this, but I have had a lot of luck recently where I just like started love tapping bolts that were rusted and it's worked ridiculously well for some reason. Uh, it's because an impact went out at work and I was like, well, let me try this. <laughs> it's something I didn't think would work because, you know, those are kind of like really rusted bolts and it did. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try that thing. The plan with this, I'm not going to spend a ton of time here. I want to actually use the thing uh, and we'll probably eventually have a video on it where, you know, I've got it in action, can sort of explain it to you better. And I will also have had seat time with it and I can tell you, hey, you know, this is what you do. It's going to be great in this application, not so much here. And just take it in stride. But for $10.99 for Made in America, and if that works, absolute steal. So coming in next, we've got a pretty, <laughs> pretty long item. But I think it was another great buy as well. This is their part number 45162. And uh, it would originally retail for $24.65, which... You could kind of justify it. Depends, you know, like if a truck comes by, if you need it, if you want it, if you have stuff that's shorter and you cobble it together. But on steals and deals right now, it is $12.99. Again, roughly half price. And the answer for me was yes, I'm buying that. So it is right here coming in. Doesn't fit. It's on the mat, but it's not all in. So <laughs> I tilt it around. Check it out. This is a 3 8 drive extension. We got the ball end on this side. We got the socket drive here. We got a little bit of knurling right there. SK does a pretty good job with that. It's sort of like an old school, kind of like a dumbbell knurl, you know, the adjustable plate ones. 
and uh, it's got their super chrome finish which again that's not a huge thing for me but it does feel good in the hand especially if you're you know like speed ratcheting something but the main thing this was a 12 inch extension which i don't even know that i have one in three eighths i might <laughs> I would have to check, but typically I would cobble stuff together, you know, like a six and two threes most likely or something along those lines. There's been a lot of weird bolts on the truck and stuff where I've needed really long extensions and swivels on the end to access something. And I thought, US made SK tools for 12 bucks, let's do it. Uh, now, if you're in the market for a bunch of extensions, you know, you're either rebuilding a set or you're just starting from scratch or, you know, new location, whatever it may be. Tecton Tools, they've got uh, really nice, in my opinion, uh, extensions, and you're going to get a comprehensive set, and it's pretty affordable. Keep in mind, downside there, if it matters to you, country of origin is going to be Taiwan. But again, this is American-made, and for $13, sign me up. Also, it's going to pair quite nicely with this next item, which is our final item. <laughs> and, uh, it is right here in this bag. This thing is their part number, 80200, and it's in a different bag. The others were all in clear. This one's not. Uh, pinned on there myself, it would typically cost 104 and I got it for $51.99, which is kind of what it cost when it was new. And uh, some of you might have an idea of what this is. This is something that I've wanted to try for a really, really long time. I was kind of sad when I purchased it because the next day is whenever the uh, Z HPS, which is the HP line with... The push button uh, became available at KC Tool. Granted, it wasn't in stock, but you could order it, you know. And I thought, man, I could use that money towards that. But uh, went ahead, and this was something that was been on the list for so long. This is literally what I was waiting for was the steals and deals with it, where it was actually available. And if you didn't know, now you do. It's a ratchet. And if you're guessing that that's the 3H drive, since it would pair with this, and the LP90, you would be 100% correct. So... Picking it up for around $50, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, hopefully, at least right now, if I open this and we hate it, I won't be fine with it. If I use it for two months and can't stand the thing, it'll be a different story. But right now, I feel like at 51 bucks, it's a pretty solid buy. So, also note, I really do cycle through the tools. I do it as best I can. And when coming in and deciding what I was going to use to cut this guy, I went with the Star Villa. Why? Because it matches the gloves and the color scheme. So, Star Villa and SK can't really go wrong with that. Now, the big issue here, when this launched, it had a green selector switch. People went nuts about it. They loved it. They wanted it. And then people started getting them without the green selector switch. The original story, at least as far as I know, is that there was a supplier issue and they couldn't get the switches. Uh, I think that story has since changed to that was only for the initial batch. Which one of those is true? I don't know. Uh, in all honesty, would I have liked and preferred a green selector switch? Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. It's simple. You're not adding much to the ratchet. It makes it pop. You know, it's, you know, it's kind of like branded, if you will. Uh, but it's not the end of the world for me now. What I want to point out... This didn't look that good, like lustry, the chrome, but I wondered if it was in this bag because it's sort of not completely translucent and it's got the white backdrop. That's why I hadn't opened it until just now. Obviously, it's not coming out that side. We just cut here. So you're going to see... Okay. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now, you should know based on anything I've done here, particularly KC Tool stuff, German tools... Yeah, I'm an American. Yeah, I'm in Texas, but I just have a thing for matte chrome. I like the texture of it. I like the feel of it. Uh, you get a better grip, in my opinion. It doesn't cast as much light back at you, you know, whether that be shop light, natural light, or, you know, like a work light under a vehicle. And I'm just not that big on the shiny chrome, right? You know, I've, I've had it. I appreciate it. I understand why people would like it and it would appeal to them. Not really my thing. Now, that said, when it's my only option and I have to get the chrome, I want it to look really good, all right? And so I've got to say, I don't think the camera's really doing it justice again because of all the light that it casts and reflects back, but this does actually look pretty dadgum good, so uh, that is nice to see. Now, coming in, I guess we should get a, get a measurement here, right? So we've got the Black Widow just hanging out. Let's see what we can do there. 
roughly eight inches overall length okay now if you're thinking okay sklp 90 what's the catch well it's 3h drive we know that you know so there's our anvil this is an interesting sound okay it's not muffled as much as like a stavilla or a hazette but uh, it does be serviceable here. We've got little hex cap screws, which is an interesting choice. It's also down lower. There's none of the clips or anything. But what this sounds like to me is a cr the X-frame wrenches, which I do actually like uh, quite well, actually. Um, they have a really unique sound, in my opinion. But what this sounds like is if you were to cross that with the sound of like the Vera Zyclops, I'm talking about the bare metal handle one, like super low tooth count, maybe 36 or something. Uh, and it has that same kind of like pitch to it. <laughs> I realize this is 90 tooth, right? That's where the, you know, LP90 comes in, but it's just got that sound to it. Uh, it's kind of, kind of like it. Uh, selector switch is oddly stiff, but uh, I guess we won't accidentally switch directions, right? So, uh, so far so good. Now, if you're thinking, okay, LP90, what's the LP about? Well, it would be for low profile. So you're thinking here and you're thinking, okay, eight inch overall length, it's teardrop, pear head, whatever, low profile. Well, check that out. That is fairly, that might just be slightly thicker than an X-frame, which people's biggest knock on those is a thick wrench. Yes, it is, but it's still a sweet wrench in my opinion. Uh, what I did, and it's a terrible example, I grabbed a quarter drive Stavilla, just for the contrast between, you know, like a matte chrome and a, the super chrome here. I think it's pretty apparent, right? <laughs> and uh, this is also quarter drive from Stavilla. This is my first ever Stavilla ratchet. Note, they don't have anything visible there. That's because it's sort of aviation intention, right? They don't want anything dropping into a jet engine, especially tiny microscopic fasteners in the broader scope of things. But check this out. If I put this side by side, and keep in mind, Stavilla, they've got the ratchet game down pretty strong. Do you see how the LP90 is just slightly thicker than this quarter drive Stavilla? I should probably grab a Craftsman and a 3 8 and a couple of different brands, but we'll do that here in a second. Uh, that's sort of the selling point. It was a change of direction for them. Uh, because the classic SK is the round head with the selector switch and the sweet knurling, which... A lot of people hate those. Uh, I kind of like them because they were always at work, you know, growing up and, you know, through trade schools and everything. But uh, it's a situation where it's just a fat handle with a really nice knurling. Um, over time, the knurling wears down, you know, it's not like a bracing on your hand or anything. I love it. Uh, I like that type of a thing. If I'm going to have a handle like this, I almost prefer knurling over uh, just bare metal. But uh, that was kind of their thing. It was always round and it had the selector switch, right? That's how you sort of identified an SK or an SK lookalike. So this was their kind of first foray into what most people would have in their head when they say ratchet. You know, you picture something similar to this. Now, there is no push button here. That's kind of a knock. It should, in theory, be stronger. You know, kind of remains to be seen. I don't envision us testing that out because even at $51, I don't want to tear this thing up. But uh, I got to say, outside of the selector switch being oddly stiff, I'm kind of liking it so far. So uh, that is a good thing. Now let's go ahead while we have it. And, uh, we're going to plug that sucker on. That's a little disappointing. I realize that's a 12-inch extension, so it's, of course, going to have a greater you know, angle of incidence between the tip. But uh, I thought it would fit a little tighter. Nonetheless, though, I think this is a pretty solid combination. $63, essentially, on steals and deals can get you a foot-long extension and the LP90. So what I'm going to do real, real quick is try to get my nose to stop running for you, number one. And number two, I'm going to go and I'm going to grab a couple other ratchets so we can compare. And we're back. So LP90 sitting here. This is a 9 16 X-frame. <laughs> nah. Do you hear that sort of like precise sound? If you take this and cross it with the Vera Zyclops, that's what this sounds like to me. Uh, see how that's a little bit more amplified even being at that distance? It's just sort of like more of an echo as opposed to this kind of being a faint sound, right? But what I wanted to highlight here, aside from comparing the Chrome, check out the profile here because again, LP90, low profile, 9 X-frame. If I can line these up. Sorry, that's dirty. I didn't 
you know, to get a chance to clean it, I didn't think to you, but oh man, what an awkward pairing. It's roughly, I'd say like uh, 80%, you know, just 80% more than the end of the wrench, which keep in mind, that is one knock people have on these. I haven't had issues with it. I don't put the ratchet end in tight spaces, but uh, I'll tell you what, these have been good to me, and I, I certainly hope this guy will as well. But I uh, wanted to grab this while I was in there. This is just a little 3-inch or 2-inch even maybe, Craftsman. Look at the difference in the curl. I'm granted, this is U.S. Craftsman, uh, but it's obviously, you know, it's been used a lot because, again, it's like one of my only extensions for years. And uh, that gives you an idea for all the chrome people out there. Uh, yes, this does actually look pretty good. So uh, we're going to come in now and let's stick with Craftsman. This is my trusty 3 8 It was my only 3 8 ratchet for forever. Those are actually uh, burn marks uh, where, you know, you find out that uh, the valve cover clearance with the... <laughs> Uh, entry of the wires into the passenger compartment was a little tighter than you thought it was, right? But anyway, check this out. 3H drive, 3H drive. It's just slightly, you know, so this is enough to be noticeable, I'm not going to lie, but uh, for this not having a push button and this having a push button, I kind of thought that would have been the difference. Overall length, that kind of gives you an idea that SK is a bit longer. Uh, let's come in and compare. I went ahead and grabbed a proper style Velo comparison since it's 3 8 I'd say the SK is just, I mean, a fractionally smaller. And this is probably my favorite 3 8 ratchet. I love the knee pros. I only use it when I'm working on the Challenger though. <laughs> and this one I use all the rest of the time. And it's just buttery smooth and I love it. Uh, overall length comparisons, again, the SK just a little bit longer. I don't think I'll have an issue with that. Again, if you want to make the tight space argument, you know, so be it. But uh, the Hazette 8816, which we gave away to uh, Dreamcat 4, he sh that actually shipped out today from KC Tool, so you should be seeing it fairly soon. Granted, he is in the UK, so it might be a while. The Hazette is not quite as slim as the Star Villa. Keep in mind, though, this is not the HPS. This is the HP, so no push button, which makes it a great comparison to the SK. And the SK is just a little bit longer. Uh, this one, I'm not going to lie, I have not used this much at all. My bigger concern was the half-inch drive Star Villa. Uh, I didn't like it near as well as I thought I would, and so I've been trying to break it in. It is getting a lot better. I uh, used it... Uh, almost exclusively on the back end of the gantry crane. Now, something that these two have that the SK doesn't is padded handles, right? So that's something I have gotten used to and feel spoiled by because, again, it's not really the most ergonomic or comfortable handle, but it was all that I had for years, and it was sort of what I was accustomed to. A lot of the old proto-ratchets at work, uh, similar design to this Craftsman, actually, but we'll have to see. I have to say, for a bare metal handle, and this we do have some Proto. I'm talking old stuff. Uh, I want to say Proto. I think it's like the Challenger line, maybe. But uh, this is pretty comfortable for a bare metal handle. Now, keep in mind, my big thing is not necessarily comfort. It's just that I like my, you know, the grip to be filled. I don't want to have to spin my hand over like that. I prefer to just kind of have the ratchet naturally fill the gap and with a bare handle I don't care what brand it is that doesn't happen uh, but I have to tell you that is pretty comfortable so little little top heavy I just noticed that as we're going to town but nothing major at all again the biggest issue is just that like that's a legit complaint <laughs> and uh, the good news is if you're somebody who let's say you've got you know the Hazette which look how I mean, effortless, sweet. And I haven't even used this one much, so. Um, the bottom line, though, that is an issue for me. However, if you're the type of person that for whatever reasons, you know, the ratchet and socket guides, gods spit on you when you're wrenching, and you constantly, inadvertently switch direction, which that does happen to me a lot at work with my little Tekton composite one uh, that I use when I pull motors and stuff. 
if that happens to you, this might be a great solution. I would assume that this tight mechanism would transfer across the entire line. Uh, they've got 3 8 flex heads, you know, half inch, whatever. Uh, so keep that in mind. Some of you, this might be a selling point to me. It's like, I don't know about that. Maybe it'll break in over time. Maybe we need to like grease it up. I don't know. Um, but I have to say, pretty impressive. So, um, could I see spending a hundred on this? Yeah, you know, if you're into chrome, if buying American is really important to you, if curiosity gets you, uh, if you really dig the design, whatever, if you're an SK loyalist, 50 bucks, yeah. I mean, jump on board, get on the bandwagon, because that's a pretty dadgum good deal for a 3H drive ratchet. Made in America, uh, with a really nice chrome, really nice finish, and at this point in time, no, no ill-conceived notions right so uh the ultimate test is going to of course be time not what does this impress me with and what is it like right now today when it came out of the packaging what is this like in a year what is this like in five years ten years that's sort of the true test of time and uh, speaks in my opinion to the quality of the tool so we will have to keep tabs on that of course i can't uh, accelerate time and if i could i'd probably turn it back <laughs> but, uh, anyway the bottom line 50 bucks? Absolutely. Uh, I feel, like I said, I was sort of sad because I was thinking, man, I could have had this with a push button for like a little north of 100 and I didn't know it was available to order. But uh, now having this in hand, I actually kind of do kind of like it. We'll have to see what we think of it. The Stavilla seems lightest. Uh, the Hazet and then the SK. So it's not... Uh, not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, just, I've gotten now kind of accustomed to the padded handles and <laughs> we don't have that here. So I do, I will honestly say that's a good design. If this was the same handle design and a half inch, I think I would have no complaints as is. I just personally, and I realize I think I'm in a minority here. I wish it was a little fatter. Uh, of course, again, I'm not talking, oh, well, it's never going to fit here. I'm totally aware of that stuff. But just in terms of holding the ratchet for comfort, you know, that's where I stand. Now, granted, a lot of the times, uh, whenever I'm doing anything, I get the socket on and I get to town and I hold the ratchet up here anyway. And kind of, I got to say, that's sort of a little, little more natural. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm the only person that does that. But instead of coming out here and, you know, turning like that, I'll just slide my hand up and go to town, you know. But uh, it does feel good there again. This is actually really nice. Just personally, if it just had a little bit more, shall we say, voluptuousness to it, I think I, I would be complaint free there. So, minus the selector switch, I got nothing bad to say at this point in time. I do wish the selector switch was green, but it's not the end of the world for me. Uh, this, I think, was an absolute bargain. It's going to see heavy use. I honestly don't think I have a 12 inch extension. I, I know I've got some sixes. That very well could be my longest uh, extension there. So, And then, of course, we got this guy, which, as I said, if you're curious about that, you want me to expedite that, uh, let me know. But as is, I just plan to have that in my arsenal. Then when I need it, I'm going to use it once I've used it and have a good feel for if it works, if it's a piece of trash, if it's amazing and everyone should have one, all that type of stuff. At that point in time, I'll come and make a standalone video on it. But uh, it is interesting because, again, picture this, you know, in your air hammer, and then you're just pounding on the bolt to loosen it. Uh, and then I think you can actually run a wrench across there. But uh, it's something, in all my time, I've never seen anyone have anything like that. So uh, I'm going to play with it and see how see how we like it. <laughs> so I think that is it. Again, the gloves, if you're an SK fan or you love this, now is the time to buy personally. I still think the 22 is a little high. Uh, if you were able to get these like $9.99, $14.99, even $19, I think it'd be a little bit better of a deal for you. But not going to lie, these look ridiculously awesome in the color scheme. So there that is. But uh, let me know what you think of this stuff. I nearly brought in the chisel. I thought, you know what? I've invested in the Ghidorah stuff. It works good. I'm going to stick with that. And that was my logic there. So, uh, But again, uh, patience pays off because I saved myself about 50 bucks on this guy. Uh, something I had wanted a really long time. Waited and waited and waited and waited. And then, hey, the stars aligned and I get it for half price. So works for me. Can't complain. But uh, 
I don't know what's going on in the air. It's not even windy today, but uh, I've had a heck of a time breathing, so I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna go try to take care of that. Probably heat up some pizza here in a little bit, work on the truck some more, and uh, we'll wrap this thing up. So I do hope you enjoyed, hope you learned a little something. If you have the SK LP90, how long have you had it? How do you like it? How does it compare with what else you have? Not what someone else has. If you've got the Hazette 8816 HP and it kicked that to the curb, or you brought in the SK and it kicked the Hazette to the curb, or you know, vice versa, if you love that more than your Snap-on or uh, your Mac or whatever, let us know. That is, in my opinion, first-hand feedback, the best way to get anything done. And the uh, ultimate goal here, help people out in their purchases. The more you know as an informed buyer, the better decision you'll make, the less likely you are to throw your money away. 12-inch extension, I envision no issues there, really. Let's just, since we have this, I didn't grab any sockets, but that's fine. It's totally acceptable. Uh, Going to be nice, and again, American-made for that price point all day every day this if it works like i hope it does i think it's an absolute steal as well so sk steals and deals if you go to their website there's a little three lines in the corner click it and then uh come down and you will see steals and deals i want to say it's almost monthly that they update this now keep in mind if they put these on steals and deals and they sell out it doesn't renew it's just kind of gone you got to wait and wait and wait and wait for that to come back on steals and deals so keep that in mind you know maybe kind of if something comes up you want order it you know don't just wait two weeks or something but uh you do save quite a bit of money sort of akin to kc tools tool of the day but uh, like i said any first-hand experience with any of this stuff let me know similarly if you do have these and you actually use them how are they holding up for you uh, again i don't mean to knock this style of gloves it's just I used to love mechanics, I felt the quality went downhill, and I've since found things a lot better. So, uh, and spoiler alert, you know, like the Magid stuff that I brought in from Amazon, those have been good too. But uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit of an alpha fan, I guess you could say. But again, in terms of aesthetics and privately labeled, these are super cool. So uh, I'm content with that, and uh, hopefully, like I said, you had a good time. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And uh, I will keep you posted on this thing. And again, let me know if you're interested or if you in particular have used the bolt rattler type of a thing. I'm sure other companies have something similar. But uh, again, it's something I had never seen for an air hammer. So I thought, ooh, let's, let's give it a go. So uh, very well could wind up taking that to work, I guess. Who knows? But uh, that said, I'll quit rambling Lone Star Mopars. You can find us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you prefer. If you are not subscribed, make sure you do that. If you do that, ring the bell, jump your charger across the creek. They just might let you know. We have new videos up every Saturday and usually Wednesdays. Tool content on the weekends, automotive stuff during the week. And who knows what else in the meantime. So that's it. Thanks again for watching. Have a fantastic weekend. I will catch you back here for more action from the shop.